in Old Portdale, on the edge of Old Portdale. I uh, left the car in um, Hope and I've probably hiked about 10 miles, so I'm quite close to where I camped before in uh, Raven's Clough, but this time I'm overlooking Old Portdale and tomorrow I shall probably walk up onto Bleaklow and then head round towards the Derwent Edge and camp somewhere around there. I struggled to find somewhere to pitch it uh, it was uh, I was feeling uh, pretty shattered about six o'clock it's probably about half past eight now I get on for nine o'clock but uh, I was pretty uh, felt pretty knackered I didn't want to go any further and uh, so I managed to dig myself out a little pitch just there and uh, and then I thought I'd put my long bloody tent pegs in but I hadn't and I've only got these short ones and I'm pitched on a bit of peat on the one side and the bloody pegs are struggling to stay in but it's not too bad I've put down a few stones and a big chunk of wood to stick on top of it but I've uh, not had any lunch yet because I bought some sandwiches with me and had those so I'm about to have uh, a bit of lunch and just finishing off my coffee so and then uh, time to have a rest enjoy this uh, environment there's a uh, whoops don't want to fall off the edge of the beach there's a uh, the northern edge of kinder over there looking all uh, dark and foreboding in the shadows but, uh, yeah that's uh, so the snake in just the other side of that hill you can see there and the trig point, uh, which is past Old Port Castles, is on top of that hill over there. So, right, well, get, hopefully I'll have a good night's sleep. But see, I've had a bit of a lay down. It's, it, it does seem quite comfortable. I had to kick a few tussocks of grass out of the way to carve myself out a little uh, bit for my sleeping pad. But it uh, seems okay. Anyway, we'll see you in the morning. That's, so that's me, I'm all packed up and when while camping it's always very important to leave no trace. So I've uh, roughed up the grass where I had my tent, so as far as you can tell I've not been there. So now this morning I'm off up towards Bleaklow and we'll see what the day brings.
Rookdale up to grains in the water is very hard going. I'm really taking my time, very slow, trying to go too fast. It's extremely tiring and ankle twisting because there doesn't seem to be a proper path, either following hare tracks, sheep tracks. Haven't seen any signs of uh, any footprints or anything. But I'm not too far away from grains in the water now. And I've kept quite, kind of quite high up on this bank side here. Oh, there's a guy. I've seen somebody, a jogger. Just gone by. Maybe there's a better path down there. I'll check it out. Well, there you go. That's a sign, isn't it? There might be a path there halfway down the back. I saw one, but I thought it was a sheep trod. <laughs> right. Keep going. Just when I was saying I'm going slow, some guy goes past running. It's amazing here how the water in Allportdale runs uh, down the bedrock in a in a cascade of tiny waterfalls. It's really beautiful, and uh, another memory comes back. Uh, years ago there wasn't as much water in it then but walking up along the riverbed which was really easy going it's beautiful what a stunning location so we've come up this valley here which is old port dale and we find ourselves in this incredible amphitheater of hills absolutely beautiful Curry noodles, lovely. Can't beat them. Marmite biscuits.
this is Grinner Stones, it's the first time I've been here. Oh, look at those pigeons, wow. Racing pigeons. This is a seat made for me. I'm heading straight up the bank here from Stainery Clough and I'm going to work my way up the hillside to Bullstones up there.
amazing view. You can't see it because I'm in the bloody way. But you can see the Howden Dam from here. That's incredible. It's incredible, that is. Well, I'm running out of steam. Looks like Bullstones is where I'm camping. At least there's a spring there. Right, let's see if we can get up this steep hillside. What a beautiful tree, this is pretty old, isn't it? Beautiful, isn't it? Hey, standing here on its own. Standing here on your own, eh? Still going. Whoops. Good morning of the it's the morning of day three. Anyway, look at this bloody marvellous view. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? The the mist clearing now. Oh, oh well. That's a look that's enough of my waffling bollocks, isn't it? God. <laughs> I'm starting to really uh, get to know this area. I mean, I explored it years ago, as I've probably said many times, but uh, I'm reacquainting myself with it. And uh, I'm slowly getting into all the nooks and crannies, the little valleys. It's, well, it, it's vast, this area. You don't think it is, but it, it is, it's huge. Another thing I was thinking this morning was that last night I was on the phone to my son-in-law and he commented that to oh, hope a rock don't fall down and kill you in the night. And I was thinking about these rocks. You think these rocks are fixed? 
<laughs> stationary you know every time you visit them they've not moved nothing's changed but uh, if you imagine them as in a sort of time lapse over hundreds or thousands of years that cliff face was probably right out here where I'm standing and as the soils are eroded away particularly from the base of the rocks they've uh, these stacks as they've been split by the rain and eroded they collapse and fall down and the rocks tumble down here and even in front here this is probably all boulders and and that uh, the boulders from these rocks and that uh, edge was probably further this way and uh, you can see that one right in the middle there the, there's hardly anything holding the third stone down the one at the bottom there's hardly anything holding that in place so it's got all those tons of rocks on top of it and just a bit more erosion at the base in the cliff there and that stack of three and maybe the one right on the top is just going to come down and you can see how the, you know there's a stack there it's toppled over away from the cliff face so that just goes to show how uh, impermanent and changing everything is even if you don't think it is so on that note I think I'm going to have my muesli quick run through we've got my tarp tent notch lithium 600 grams 100 grams for the ground sheet Compadel trekking poles Uberlite sleeping pad Midge net Pillow Aegis Max 800 fill sleeping bag What's left of my food which is another meal at lunchtime today There's not going to be much left of that Rubbish Toiletries First aid, towel, BRS stove, gas canister, tin foil windshield, a lighter, sun hat, phone, power bank, spare battery, earphones, sleeping pad, one litre water bottle, 750ml jug, slippers, gaiters, not needed, Pants, socks, extra shirt, wind shell, down jacket, which I've wore in my sleeping bag at night, but not usually put it on until the middle of the night. Pack light, trousers and jacket, waterproof cover for the rucksack, map and compass in a case. And Osprey 45 litre bag. Uh, that's it. Oh yeah, two two litre bags for putting water in for the night time. Ah, so that's about it. Oh yes, so the total weight of that lot without water and without my trekking poles but everything else for a four day trip came to 8.6 kilos so enough of that bollocks <laughs> and back to the views which are a bit more interesting Must have got fat overnight. <laughs> Belt won't go up.
like they've been doing some more regeneration work along here. See this green grass on the banks, which look absolutely beautiful with this uh, cotton grass growing. Well, that would have just been brown peat. So they must have sown grass seeds there. And uh, it looks stunning. to the uh, fisherman's rest then the uh, it's all pubs in it not the Branson pony that's in Lord of the Ring the uh, Yorkshire Bridge Inn then Thornhill Hope home tonight Hello guys, you alright? Alright. <laughs> Ain't got a hot chocolate for you, well, I'm have afraid. You up here? <laughs> eh? Have I walked up here? Yeah. Ugh. This is my third day. What are you on? Walking. Hey. <laughs> my feet. <laughs> How do you like the electric bike? Fucking brilliant. That's a lapwing. Not seen many lapwings, seen a lot of curlews. There's back to a trig point behind me and I've come out to these outlying rocks 
which are pretty nice because I've come to have a look at where I camped with my brother 30 years ago and we camped here behind these rocks some great adventures with my brother and some great hiking in the Peak District years ago but, uh, unfortunately I don't see that much of him anymore which is a shame we had a good night here That was that was quick answering the phone. I've been on this computer thing for work all day. Yeah. And I'm uh, just going through the answering some questions in a, a fourth test or fifth test for today. So I'm just going through that at the minute. So you're at your little desk there. I'm at my little <laughs> desk here. Yes, and thinking to myself, I can't absorb any more information. <laughs> oh dear. So I'm just doing the test at the minute. Fourteen questions. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm I'm coming home tonight. I can't remember whether I said that. No, you said you weren't sure. Okay, well, I'm about an hour and a half from the car, and then an hour and a half from uh, getting home. So, so okay, that's so about half past six then. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, half past yeah. six. Okay, dokie. You decided you didn't want another night out then. Um. Well, I don't suppose there's much point really pushing it a bit. It's it's so hot and sweaty at the moment. It, you know. Mm probably be a bit more comfortable in the when it's colder but uh, yeah okay. yeah so okay. um i'll see you a bit later then now all right then my darling i'll see you later on all right then love you loads love you too darling see you later see, bye bye ah that's the lovely ellen the missus i dare ask her to get me some tea but i'm sure she will